San Antonio postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic. Coming up, why one organization is choosing not to participate this year. There could soon be a new weapon in the war against COVID-19. A third vaccine could be approved for use. How the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is different from the other two already on the market. And what of President Biden's campaign promises is to bring back unity to a divided Washington, D.C. How he plans on working with Republicans when it comes to a COVID relief bill as the impeachment trial of Donald Trump threatens to create a deeper divide. Last week it was GameStop, now it is silver. Prices are surging. Coming up, we'll tell you why and how much. And sure, we're looking at another sunny week, but you really need to prepare for some huge temperature swings. We have a series of cold fronts on the horizon. I'll be back to tell you more coming right up. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, those who were hoping to receive their second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine at the Alamo Dome this week are going to have to wait a little bit longer. According to the city, the vaccine shipment, which would have supplied the scheduled doses, has been delayed by the state. All the appointments that were set for tomorrow through Thursday have now been rescheduled. They all move now to February 16th through the 18th at the same times. It's unclear at this time why the shipment was delayed, but local health officials are saying those who were set to receive their second dose shouldn't worry about the delay in timing. They say that the vaccine will still work with no issues for up to six weeks after the first dose. From vaccines being delayed to Fiesta being moved now, the COVID-19 pandemic crashing San Antonio's biggest party for the second year in a row, Fiesta 2021, postponing from April until June. The organizers say this is all based on recommendations from Metro Health and the city of San Antonio. Two major parades also canceled today, all due to health and safety concerns. Our Tiffany Huertas with a look at why some organizations say they are not taking any chances. We are doing it for the spectators and the participants for their health and safety, which is our number one concern. The Fiesta Flambeau Parade for 2021 was canceled this morning. The president of the association says COVID-19 has impacted their members. We've lost three members so far. The Battle of Flowers Parade also canceled due to concerns over COVID-19. The Fiesta Commission president says they hired a health expert consultant to help guide them during the pandemic. Protocol for Fiesta will, is still in discussion. That's going to depend on, you know, where the positivity rate's at, where the pandemic's at at that point, hospitalization numbers that we're looking at. Baltazar Serna says these events are crucial for many organizations that participate. All nonprofits are, are suffering. <laughs> He says it's also important for the city. It's also a huge economic boost to the city. Over close to $400 million in economic impact to the city. The Texas Cavaliers River Parade is one of several events still moving forward. We will do everything that we can and comply with the rules of the health department. Barton Simpson, the commander of the Texas Cavaliers, says more than 250,000 people attend this event every year. We would spread out chairs and just like any restaurant would do. And listen, if it's not feasible, we're not going to do it. And if it's not safe, we're not going to do it. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. If you already purchased your tickets to either the Battle of Flowers or Fiesta Flambeau parades, you can request a full refund starting February 15th. We have a link to do that right now on KSET.com. There you're going to also find a list of other Fiesta related events that have either been postponed or canceled. The new at five is Governor Greg Abbott gives his state of the state address tonight. He'll be laying out some of his legislative agenda. One issue he's unlikely to mention, but is among local leaders priorities, is the expansion of Medicaid. Opting in would expand eligibility to people earning a certain income threshold. But as part of the 2010 Affordable Care Act, it's been a partisan issue across the country and certainly in Texas, which remains one of 12 states that haven't chosen to opt in. Still, the associate director of the Policy Institute, Every Texan, tells KSAT factors like potential budget savings for the state and the stress on Texas from the pandemic may provide the best chance for expanded Medicaid passing so far. But it is, I do feel very comfortable saying that the level of interest in it is far higher than it's ever been, that we're hearing a lot more Republican members talk about it, about the need to consider it. I think a lot of them are persuaded by the fact that the state budget could actually save money. You're coming up at six here from one local man about what living uninsured is really like.
Governor Greg Abbott's State of the State address happening tonight at 7 o'clock. During that address, the governor is going to update Texans on the state's response to COVID-19 and outline his priorities for the 87th legislature. According to a news release, Governor Abbott will also, quote, highlight exceptional Texans from across the state, end quote. You can watch it all live right here on KSET.com. New details surrounding a deadly crash. The medical examiner's office identifying the woman killed as 36-year-old Carissa Kahutek. Police say Friday night was the, the woman was driving on I-10 on the city's northwest side when she crashed into a ditch near Casa Bella and UTSA Boulevard. Her vehicle got stuck under some drainage tunnels. Kahutek was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators have ruled the crash an accident. They say alcohol does not appear to have been a factor. We are still waiting to learn the name of the man killed this morning when he was run over by an 18 wheeler. It happened on Highway 90, just east of Highway 211. The Bear County Sheriff's Office telling us the man was using a hose on the big rig. He was trying to pump up some air in a tire on a piece of construction equipment. Something went wrong though, and the 18 wheeler started rolling. Deputies say the victim tried to move out of the way, but then he fell down and the truck rolled over him. Investigators believe homeless people may have started a fire at an abandoned home. The flames sparking around one this morning in the 200 block of Cliffwood Drive, not far from West Avenue and I-10 on the north side. Firefighters tell us the home was boarded up except for a door in the back where some people had broken in. Fire crews were able to knock down the flames, but not before the next door neighbor's boat was destroyed in the fire. Damage to the home estimated around $70,000. There is a new COVID-19 vaccine that may soon be approved by the Federal Drug Administration, but this one is from Johnson & Johnson, and it's very different from the other ones that are currently authorized in the U.S. Eric Hernandez with when that vaccine could start reaching people's arms. It may soon be a new weapon in the war on COVID-19. A third vaccine made by Johnson & Johnson could be authorized for use in the U.S. in the near future. This is a single shot vaccine in which you start to see efficacy anywhere from seven to 10 days following the first and only shot. Health experts say getting people vaccinated as quickly and efficiently as possible is one of the best defenses against the virus. A single dose of this vaccine means more people could gain immunity more quickly as none would have to be set aside for a second shot. It is very, very good with regard to cold chain requirements, namely requiring only a refrigerator. It is inexpensive and the company is capable of making doses in the in the numbers of billions. Johnson & Johnson says their vaccine was 72% effective against moderate and severe disease in the U.S. The vaccines already on the market in the U.S. are about 95% effective overall against symptomatic COVID-19, with perhaps even higher efficiency against severe cases. But some experts urge Americans not to count Johnson & Johnson out. If we had an abundance of, of mRNA vaccines, you know, where everybody could easily get those vaccines now, this probably wouldn't be a discussion, but we don't. The U.S. has ordered 100 million doses and Johnson & Johnson says they can meet that commitment by June. Now, the company will be requesting what's known as an emergency use authorization or an EUA from the FDA early this month. That data will closely be looked at by the FDA and CDC advisors. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. A group of GOP senators officially offering up their counterproposal to President Joe Biden's sweeping COVID-19 relief bill today. As ABC's Andrew Dimberg reports, it's setting up to be the president's first real test of his campaign promise to work across the aisle and bring unity back to a divided Washington, D.C. It's a delicate balance as President Joe Biden weighs achieving bipartisanship versus delivering urgent economic relief. I support passing COVID relief with support from Republicans if we can get it, but the COVID relief has to pass. 
After the president proposed a near $2 trillion coronavirus stimulus package, he's facing his first test on his unity pledge, with millions of Americans desperate for relief hanging in the balance. Today, 10 GOP senators meeting with the president in the Oval Office, delivering their counteroffer on COVID relief. It's an exchange of, an, of ideas, and he's happy to uh, have a conversation with them. The Republican version is a fraction of the cost and delivers a fraction of the aid Democrats are calling for, $600 billion total compared to the $1.9 trillion the White House is requesting. The two sides also disagree on the amount of direct stimulus payments most Americans should receive, raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, and whether to give billions in aid to state and local governments. Although Biden has promised compromise and a willingness to work with Republicans, the sides are far apart on the big ticket items, including that price tag. It's not that it is uh, too big, this package. The risk is that it is too small. But over the weekend, Biden's top economic advisor hinted the administration may be willing to consider a smaller package, especially in regards to those direct stimulus checks. That's certainly a place that we're willing to sit down and think about other ways to make the entire package more effective. And there's another hurdle on the road to the common ground politics Biden hopes to see. The looming Senate impeachment trial of Donald Trump, charged with inciting insurrection in the Capitol on January 6th. The Senate showdown threatening to deepen the divide in an already political fractured Congress. This is not a trial of the president, but of a private citizen. What Trump did was the most despicable thing any president has ever done. And after splitting with his original impeachment defense attorneys, former President Trump has now hired a new legal team to represent him. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. He was best known for his role as Screech on the 90s sitcom Saved by the Bell. 44-year-old Dustin Diamond passing away today. Last month, Diamond hospitalized in Florida with cancer. In a statement, his manager said Diamond did not suffer before he passed. Hey, looking outside today, a lot of sunshine, beautiful day, felt good out there, especially this afternoon as we warmed up rather efficiently with that sunshine and dry air in place. We had a high temperature of 68 degrees in San Antonio, so just three degrees above average and our morning low was three degrees above average as well. Started the day at 45, made it well into the 60s. Eagle Pass right now reporting 70, 68 Lakey, 64 Leon Springs, into Floresville about 69 degrees and you get the idea. For the most part, we are in the 60s, very pleasant, especially with that sunshine. Seguin 64 and you go to Bernie right now at 66. Temperatures falling off quickly this evening. Good radiational cooling. So we'll be down in the upper 40s by 10 p.m. Not much of a breeze, clear sky, but get ready for some big temperature swings in the coming days. We're going to talk about that coming up, Steve. Thank you, Adam. Every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs blood to help fill the need our KSAC community partner, University Health, hosting a blood drive this month. It's happening February 18th and 19th from 10 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon at the Witte Museum on Broadway. If you want to participate, you need to make an appointment. You can do so by calling 210-358-2812 or visiting donatebloodtoday.com. We also have all this information on ksatcommunity.com. Still ahead on the news at five, a new shiny item now capturing investors' attention. Why the price of silver is surging next. A move over GameStop, there's now a social media push to buy silver. The hashtag is silver squeeze. The idea is to hurt big banks that some believe have repressed the price of silver. Well, it's not entirely clear who exactly is behind the strategy. It is clear the price surged to $30 an ounce. And as 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz reports, silver is definitely a hot commodity. Silver, it's the shiny thing now capturing investors' attention. Today it's been mostly buyers. Um, a lot of them are looking for silver. As the price of silver surged, Dewey Bolton says calls to his Alamo Heights coin shop did too. Customers showed up bright and early to snap up silver coins and bars. Oliver Blair heard about the frenzy. I've been buying silver for a while, so I decided to come back today and get more before the prices go up even more. When the same online group of small-time investors that targeted GameStop stock last week turned its attention to silver, demand squeezed supplies, making the metal more precious. My wholesalers pretty much overnight, they said, whereas I used to be able to buy a thousand ounce quantities, no problem. No, no. Now they're telling me it'll be two to three weeks for delivery. 
To give you an idea of how much prices have escalated, just last week, this was worth about $2,600. But today, it's selling for $3,300. As prices rise, the prospect of selling gets more attractive. Maybe that stash of old silverware or grandma's old silver tea set. It could be worth hundreds of dollars. We're paying more for that stuff than we have at any point in the last 10 years. So for people that it's collecting dust, it's a great time to sell as well. What's next? Bolton says right now, no telling. But for now, he won't be surprised to see silver keep shining. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Live look outside with Sky 12. Look at that. Not a cloud in the sky. No need for silver lining. It's already there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. Now we could use some moisture. It'd be nice to see a, a good rainy day here or there, but unfortunately that's just not in the works right now. Temperatures will be falling off quickly tonight. I mentioned that early, earlier, good radiational cooling, so it's comfortable right now, but come sunset, those temperatures are going to drop quickly. We have a dry weather pattern that's just going to continue. However, big temperature swings are on the way. We will have a couple of cold fronts coming down the pike later this week, and they're going to have a big impact on temperatures. You'll notice some big changes and fluctuations. So if you usually plan your week around what's happening out there today, that's not the thing to do this week. Okay, let's take a look at it. Let's start with our overall weather pattern. And I mentioned that a dry pattern is what we're in. Well, you look at our precipitation deficit over the past 365 days, so the uh, year to date, we're about 19 inches below average in San Antonio, 20 inches in Uvalde, 22 in Kerrville. Obviously, we could use the moisture, and we still have areas of uh, extreme drought in parts of South Texas. You look at our pattern now, a lot of sunshine, just some mid-level clouds coming in from the west, and that's it. The moisture is along the west coast and even the east coast. Two big systems, particularly the big nor'easter right now, hitting parts of the east coast. D.C., especially all the way up to New York and Boston. We're in between. We don't have any active weather here. The big dips in the upper level flow, those are along the coastline, so they're bookending the U.S. And right here in the middle, we've got this ridge, this big bump. But watch how things change later this week. We are going to see a big dip in the upper level flow come down from Canada. So basically a big cold front will be pushing southward. A blast of Arctic air across the northern tier of the U.S. And of course, we'll get clipped by it. So it will impact our temperatures. This big dip in the upper level flow. That is going to be some colder air coming southward. So let's talk about what that means temperature wise. Right now, comfortable. We're at 67 degrees. Dry air as well. Dew point of 22. 68 Hondo. 64 in Kerrville. 71 Catula, it's a pleasant Monday afternoon. And we, we were just running a few degrees above average. Tomorrow morning, I think we'll be really close to the freezing point in the hill country, maybe briefly hitting 32 Kerrville Fredericksburg Junction and some other nooks and crannies in the hill country. The vast majority of us in the mid and upper 30s to start the day tomorrow. So there will be a chill in the air and we'll have jacket weather tomorrow morning. Stone Oak 37, Lackland area 36, New Braunfels 36, and Lavernia starting their day at 36 as well. By the afternoon, well into the 60s, even pushing 70 degrees. And it's going to be a sunny day. We're looking at a lot of sunshine, just some of those mid-level clouds coming off the Pacific, uh, making it well into the 60s after that cool morning. So sweatshirt or jacket for the kids at the bus stop by the afternoon. For the most part, anything goes well into the 60s. But look how temperatures change throughout the week. We get up to 80 degrees on Thursday, okay, from 60s today and tomorrow, 70s Wednesday, 80 degrees on Thursday, and then here comes the drop. We drop back down into the 60s and then even 50s for high temperatures as we get into this upcoming weekend. So here it is on the seven day forecast. Sunny and dry for the most part. There will be periods of fog, especially Wednesday and Thursday mornings and a little extra cloud cover on Friday, but nothing to really make rain around here. So the big story is the temperatures. The first cold front is going to hit Thursday night. So Thursday we go from 80 down into the lower 60s on Friday. That's going to be an abrupt change. Then over the weekend, we've got a reinforcing shot of colder air. So 60s on Saturday, but then we're talking highs in the 50s as we get into Super Bowl Sunday. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank Just you. Just a friendly Adam. reminder. Yeah. <laughs> How could we forget? <laughs> All right. So the Spurs did not play well in their last game, but they get a chance to run it back again. Yeah. And this has been the norm during this pandemic is keeping Tim's in town for two game series. When we come back, Derek White also made his return on Saturday night in that loss. Is he good to go tonight? And you can now call him Coach Witten. Cutting him out. 
Spurs. San Antonio Spurs on a quick shot of revenge tonight when they host the Memphis Grizzlies in their second game since Saturday. That's when the Grizzlies beat the Spurs 129 to 112 in their first game in 12 days after having their last five games postponed due to COVID-19 health and safety protocols. This is the new normal this season to try and cut down travel during the pandemic. And hopefully the Spurs will find their defense tonight. The Grizzlies shot 57% in their first game back. This will also be the second game of the season for Derek White after leading the Spurs in scoring in his comeback with 18 points. How is he feeling now that he's got at least one game under his belt since injuring his second toe in his left foot for the second time this season? I'm feeling good. Um, don't have broken toe this time, so that's cool. Um, but I feel good just, um, just trying to get my legs underneath me. Um, feel like I haven't played in a while. Um, so just trying to get my legs back underneath me and do whatever it takes to help us compete. So um, that's all I was trying to do. All right, here's the matchup tonight, 7.30. Highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Now that Jason Witten has decided to retire from the NFL, he has found himself a new job and is not back to the broadcast booth where he spent one season on Monday Night Football. Witten has been named the new head football coach at Liberty Christian High School located in Argyle, Texas, where he's been a longtime Liberty parent. The announcement made today by the school after Witten played 17 seasons in the NFL, 16 with the Dallas Cowboys, and last year with the Las Vegas Raiders. Witten has asked to be signed to a one-day contract with Dallas so he can retire a Cowboy. That will Will happen in March when his contract with the Raiders runs out. It's looking more and more like the Texans are going to trade J.J. Watt before they even entertain any thought of getting rid of disgruntled quarterback Deshaun Watson, if at all. The Texans need draft picks after Bill O'Brien mortgaged the farm for last season. That turned into a huge fail, costing him his job as head coach and general manager four games into the season. That leaves him without a first or second round pick this year. Watt is in the final year of his contract that is set to pay him $17.5 million, but no guarantees. Since there's not guarantees, Many teams may wait to see if the Texans just cut Watt for cap space, leaving the Houston community leaders searching for a new home. And you heard J.J. Watt address Deshaun Watson at the end of the season, walking off the field. Sorry, we wasted you a year. But they also wasted J.J. Watt a year to compete for a Super Bowl title as well. Will be weird to see a Texans team without J.J. Watt. This is just a mess. It just keeps getting messier. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. If you love to play the lottery, you need to check out this article on our website. We have a Texas lottery data map that shows the stores that sold tickets worth $600 or more. Records show that nearly 6,000 tickets either draw or scratch off met that threshold. One of the biggest winners won more than $39 million last September at the Pick and Pack 10, Pick and Pack 10 in Seguin. You can read all about it right now on KSAT.com. Map it out. Plan it out. Yep. So getting up to 60s tomorrow, 70s Wednesday, 80 on Thursday, then temperatures tumble again Friday through the weekend. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. See you back here at 6.